<laughs> I forgot to turn my fucking microphone on again. Um, so whoever said that a little bit of uh, pure, unadulterated rage was a bad thing, um, it looks like this, well, obviously, as you can see, um, I was able to get the, uh, the insulator out um, when I when I was beating on it or when it got broke or when it got hit, um, these, these, these spot welds all busted. Uh, I knew these were broken. That was part of why I was kind of futzing with it. Um, and there was only two or three actually spot welds at the front here. Um, so, and then I looked at it and I realized the only thing that was actually holding it in was the, uh, the thermometer here the big nut on it so I unscrewed the thermometer and I jiggled this thing until it came out so what that does is that it gives me access to the um, uh, that gives me access to the back side of this and with access to the back side uh, I absolutely can straighten this um, I showed in the other video maybe I'll do a little voiceover as to what I was doing with this um, but this was actually kind of uh, it kind of uh, encouraged me to uh, well beat on it a little bit and now that I've beat on it some um, like I said it's kind of encouraging I, I may uh, I am now I got it apart so I'm gonna beat on it to like get it straight I'm gonna clean it up and I'm actually probably gonna weld it back together um, the next step is the one the back piece if I can get the top straightened out I probably won't go there's a piece that makes up with this that's bashed even worse than the, than the top here um, if I can get most of this out, which I'm pretty confident I can, um, I'm pretty confident I actually can get a good bit of this out. Uh, it's stretched pretty good in here, uh, right in here it's stretched really well, uh, pretty heavily. Uh, and this has got a, a, a crown to it that I'm probably going to have a little trouble getting back in. But um, sheet metal, once it's been stamped, uh, as long as it's not really crazy uh, stretched. And th this is a little stretched. It's stretched in here. I can see it. I know from experience that this is stretched. Um, but I have some tools that I can use to, to get that stretch out of there without actually having to use heat. Heat's a, heat's a real viable option for straightening stuff. And then I, I guess I could go to the welding supply house and get some pickling. Or I'll look, look up maybe a, there's a homemade pickling I can use to uh, uh, bring the stainless back. Because this brush, all that stuff is actually relatively simple to do. Um, so... Um, so I'm going to work the back side of this first just because it's so heavily damaged. Um, I'm going to work the back side with a hammer and dolly. I had originally thought that this piece was welded. These are welded on. This is welded here uh, from the outside. They did a fantastic job. I mean, the welds on this thing are they are literally surgical surgical grade welds. I, I joke about uh, I'm not a nuclear engineer and I'm not welding, you know, I'm, I'm not welding the submarine together, but my god, these are just these are just fantastic welds. Um, so there's part of your $4,000. Um, this lip is going to be a little tricky because it's pretty stretched, but I think I might be able to fix that too. At least make it a little bit more um, a little bit more suitable. So I'm going to bust out some of my old dollies. I think a flat, a toe dolly. I'm going to start with a toe dolly right in here um, to rough this out. And um, yeah, a toe dolly and my regular body hammer here. Um, I, this is uh, my favorite snap-on body hammer. I have another one that's actually very similar to this. It's got a little bit less of a crown on it. Um, when I take the hammers out, I'll explain exactly what hammers I'm using and why. Uh, my initial was to use that big ass rubber mallet to pound on it, uh, and then I went to a sledgehammer, and that's when I realized that I broke the uh, 
Mmm, lung butter. Uh, that's when I realized I had broken all these spot welds. I'm a little bit tempted not to even bother trying to straighten the inner piece and just put it back together, but what'll happen is the outside of the grill will get really hot and discolor. Um, it's just the nature of stainless that gets hot. This grill gets about 800 degrees. It's, it's really, that's part of why I love this thing. I mean, it really cranks out some heat. So um, I'm gonna gather up some tools and um, get at it. Okay. So I, uh, when I put away all of my body shop equipment, um, I actually wrapped all my dollies in, in uh, saran wrap and greased them because for the most part they were really clean and I, I've mentioned several times I have a water problem here in this garage. Um, and you just, you don't want rust on your dollies. I'm actually not going to leave this on. Uh, the other thing you don't want on your dollies and you don't want on your work surface is grease. Uh, shockingly. So, just going to wipe these off or just wipe the majority of the grease off. Now this dolly is hardened steel. I think this is a Martin. Um, if it's not a Martin, it's a Snap-on. Uh, I long ago polished the uh, polish the name off of it but I'm not actually going to use this right away I, I was originally going to try to, to hold this thing and, and hammer and dolly it this way and um, like hammer and dolly it this way holding this in my hand but I know that this material is pretty heavy and, and I know it can take a beating so what I did was uh, I tightened up my my horse here and I brought this post dolly out. Um, if I had help, um, I would have a helper hold this while I beat on it because this this piece is so big. It's really it's a two man operation to do it right. Um, but uh, my wife's working, and the first time I hit it with a hammer, she's going to run screaming. Um, it's not. This is not part of the world. She's just not part of her world. Um, and that's fine. I, I, I respect that. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, you know, it's just not part of her world. The first time I cut something with a, with a, uh, a grinder, she, she ran to the hills afraid I was going to burn her alive. Um, so this actually is not the greatest thing to use for this because there is a crown to this. Um, there is a crown to this, and, and by beating on it with by beating on it this way, I'm actually going to remove some of that crown, which is which is a little problematic. Uh, the other problem is that this is probably going to bounce around and, and not give me a good contact surface with this plate. That's not real important at this at this juncture of the project. Um, so I just want to make sure that my I'm going to slide this over. Give me a little bit better angle on it. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm just going to start pounding on this. Um, I'm not cleaning this dirt off here for a reason. Um, it'll give me a... Uh, I'll show you. It, if I clean it, if I polish it clean... Uh, if I polish it clean... I'm going to change my gloves too. Uh, if I polish this clean, um, I won't be able to see where my hammer strikes are going. I, I mean, I will, just because I have... You know, I'm going to toot my horn. i got 30 years of experience doing this. Um, and I, abs I absolutely can see where the hammer strikes are. But uh, it won't show up on camera at all. Um, and it's a little bit easier. It's like a guide coat. Uh, I would do the same thing if this was a car and it was paint on there. I would do probably paint. Not undercoating, not anything else. Not undercoating, not that damn sound deadener shit they put in there. Because uh, that's counterproductive. This is such a thin coating of, of basically just soot that um, this would work well. Actually, if I, it, I would use lamp black on this anyway, uh, or uh, uh, acetylene. I take my acetylene torch and I would just hit it real light with an acetylene torch and put a black coating on it and um, use that as my guide. So here goes nothing. I have ear protection and I actually might put my earplugs in depending on how this goes. If I decide I'm actually going to planish this, um, I'll put my earplugs in and I'll sit, I'll actually sit down with this thing in my lap and planish it smooth.
I should note here that I'm not actually hitting the dolly. Um, what I'm doing is I'm using the dolly, the big plate dolly here, as just a support to um, to beat on this. I'm actually I might um, I am I'm going to um, now that I see how this is working. Um, I'm gonna put a uh, I'm gonna put a sandbag under this and actually do it with a soft mallet. I, I, beating on it with a hammer is gonna stretch it out too much. I got soft mallets for this. This is. Uh, this is kind of like a forming exercise more than it is a uh, or a reforming exercise than it is a uh, uh, a making exercise. If I was making this part, uh, I'd probably use that other hammer. But th this is good. This is working out well. I have an assortment of these uh, uh, these forming mallets. Um, these are cheap ones. Well, these two are cheap ones. I got these at Harbor Freight. Um, they're polyethylene. You can use rawhide. Um, I don't have any rawhide. They're kind of expensive. These were cheap. I think both of these combined were maybe $20. Uh, this one, uh, this one's actually a little bit more expensive. I got this one at Eastwood decades ago um, when I had aspirations of making motorcycle tanks. Um, so this one's a little bit more expensive, but we're not going to use this one because the crown is not correct for what we're doing. Maybe a little bit in there you can use it. Um, but most likely I'll use the end of this hammer. Uh, this is the hammer that I'm going to use because the crown of this hammer matches this, um, matches the crown of the piece a little bit better. Um, the other one's too, is too abrupt and this will spread the blow out. I really wish I had a hand for this. working out great. Shockingly way better than I thought it was going to. I'm going to switch it on again. They're, uh, this is a cheap Harbor Freight uh, just dead blow or dead blow hammer. Um, this is pretty flat in here. Uh, this is pretty smooth. Uh, and if I use this one what it's going to do is it's going to put dimples in it. And I don't want to dimple it. I just want to push it out. Like I said, it's working shockingly well. Uh, this harder part to straighten is going to be this here. Uh, I kind of, uh, I kind of monkeyed it just by beating on it like that. I, I was so mad. I, I still am kind of mad. I'm less mad than I was earlier. Let's take a look at the outside real quick here. So we've got a pretty got this out. Not really, not too bad. Uh, the bigger issue now, actually, I pushed this out a little too far. Now, use a hammer, dummy. Use a hammer, dummy. Yeah, there's a pretty decent crease in it right here. Uh, you can see that. Yeah, you can actually see this pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty decent crease in this right here. Um, that gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to address uh, I should probably take the handle off but actually the handle is kind of providing a little bit of stability to it so uh, uh, about 50% of about 50% of doing any kind of metal straightening or metal forming it is taking a look at what you're doing and what you've got going um, I worked with guys that would just mindlessly fucking pound they, they would beat on pieces of metal like it's Chinese hookers and it's like, dude, you gotta look at what you're doing. You can't just mindlessly beat on it with a hammer and then slot body filler on it. Um, this is actually, <laughs> for, I'm still pissed off that I have to do this, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit less pissed off than I was about 20 minutes ago. Um, and it doesn't make me any less, you know, well, I'm still pissed off. I'm gonna put this nice tool holder on here for my hammer. Oh, spin that around. Oh, not so heavy now. This, um, this monkey shit here, uh, this will come out pretty. Uh, this will come out pretty easily, and I can do that by planishing. 
Um, what I'll end up having to do is, uh, I could do it two ways. I actually have a planishing hammer. I have a uh, power plant, power, power planishing hammer, and I could probably get most of these dents out that way. Uh, this is all me. This is all me beating on it like a monkey. Um, and uh, it kind of bit me in the ass, no, no pun intended. Um, I'm going to go out to my shed to the smorgasbord and see if I have a piece of angle iron, which I, I'm, I, I do actually, um, that I can slip inside of here and um, try to reform some of this edge. Because this, this particular piece is crowned in two different directions. So it's crowned this way. And it's got a, an ever so slight crown this way. I'm going to say maybe like one or two degree crown over its over its width. Um, so I, this is flat. This piece is this piece is flat. I think if I work this corner right here, um, if I work this corner. If I work this corner right here from the inside, um, I could probably flatten this a little bit better. Uh, I'd like to take this wallow out of here. Uh, and taking this wallow out is not beating on it from the back side to try to get this out. This, the damage to this, what's making this do this, is uh, the damage along this edge here, uh, particularly right about here and right about here. If I work on these from the inside, um, I could put a, uh, flip this over, I'll put a dolly on here, and I'll very carefully, very lightly tap on this. Um, shockingly, the stainless, uh, which I was expecting to be um, as hard as a rock, uh, is not. Um, it's actually relatively easy to work. I'm kind of shocked. Uh, but I haven't planished it yet, so planishing is probably going to make it work hard and then and it's more problematic after that. But I think the next step, like I said, is um, I got to get something in here. Um, I got to get something in here. This is going to be the next step right here. Uh, let me go see what I've got in the smorgasbord to, to take care of this. <sighs> Let's see if I can spin this heavy ass thing around without killing myself. Um, I'm not going to take the camera off the tripod because uh, it's a pain in the ass to put it back on and set it back up. So, uh, what, what's going on here is, uh, and I, I might be able to like cut back to the other video. So, this is a channel here. So, they folded it around and welds actually broke there. Um, so, this is the piece of metal comes out, flattens out, and it's got a bend in it uh, to create a strengthening channel. Uh, and a place to put the uh, insulator, which we're going to fix too, I think. Um, you said this kind of encouraged me a little bit. Uh, so this, I've used these for years to uh, straighten lips like this. These, these are very common on a lot of metal straightening projects. Uh, I went through my smorgasbord. I didn't even have to go out to the garage. And uh, uh, I came up with this piece of, of uh, it's uh, about 3 8 inch thick uh, hot rolled steel. Uh, it's got a terrible bow in it, but the uh, this lip is about half an inch on the inside, maybe seven sixteenths. Um, this is three eighths, so it, it fits up in there real nice. Um, you can't quite see. Yeah, push pretty good. Um, so that slides right up in there, and then that's going to provide me with. Uh, something to beat on here because this edge is real bad. The other thing is I can slip it this way. Uh, one of the things with working sheet metal is you're not working the whole piece. Okay, you're only working um, you're only working about this much at a time maximum. Um, actually, usually depending on what you're doing, uh, you're only working about this much, and then you work at, you work out. So it's if uh, you know I, I need to straighten this. Okay, so you can see.
Uh, you can see how kind of bowed this is. Uh, I, I'm not gonna lie, I, in my fury, um, I actually kind of fucked this up a little bit more than it probably was, um, which is not uncommon when you're straightening sheet metal, um, or when you're straightening something you don't want to straighten, and I don't want to straighten this. Um, so I actually probably damaged this a little bit more with my um, furious monkey blows. Um, the other thing I'm going to use here, actually the thing I'm going to use first, and this, this, this goes back to the, uh, uh, you're only working little bits at a time, is I'm going to take this pair of channel locks here. And I've done this a, a thousand times with these. Um, and just work this edge up. Uh, working this edge from the very beginning of this project was, was something that I, I, get, I don't know what I was thinking. It was like, it seemed like it was just so difficult to do at the time. And then when I got the insulator out, well, when the insulator fell out, I, uh, uh, I realized that there really wasn't a whole lot to this edge. Um, it was very difficult to bend. And that's the, one of the other natures of sheet metal is that it will, um, every time you bend sheet metal, it, it, it gives it more strength. Uh, if you've ever seen the hood of a Volkswagen Beetle, um, the reason that is stamped the way it's stamped <coughs> is to provide the most amount of strength for the least amount of structure. Um, that's how you get strength in sheet metal. Roofs, the uh, old roofs, or even the roof on my Dakota, they have, um, they have, they look like styling lines, but in reality, what they are is they're they're strengthening um, things. If you ever put a, a perfectly flat cookie tray or a cheap cookie tray into the uh, oven or a cheap pan in the oven, and you turn it up too high and it twists, um, and then never comes back, that's kind of what um, a good pan won't do that because of the way it's shaped. Um, so, it is what it is. Uh, back to what I was doing. So, I'm gonna flip this down again. Now, I don't know if it's showing up real good on the video, but this, because I use this little short thing, this edge is kinda, is now shrunk itself, actually. That's where this, that's where this bow is coming from, is when it was pashed down, when it was bashed down, it stretched. This edge stretched. Now, what I've done, is I've pulled it up, okay, and by pulling this up like this, I've created all these little ripples. Now, to make this straight again, there's two things I have to do. One is to get this edge out. Okay, so this edge needs to be made square-ish again. I know it's not showing up on the video, but it's showing up clear as day to me is so this edge is no longer this edge is crisp here crisp 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 and then it turns to shit right in here this is where the majority of the bend is and this which is dead straight is supposed to be dead straight is now going like this and it's doing that because it's stretched now you have to remove the stretch now the easiest way to remove the stretch is with heat um but i don't feel like using heat you don't need to use heat uh you can use a tool called a shrinker which is what I'm going to use, or slapper, which is what I'm going to use. Um, slim shrinker, slapper, I don't know, they've got a bunch of different names. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to beat this out some more, um, pretty violently, actually. Um, and you're not going to see it because my fat ass is going to be, be in the way holding it. Um, or I could flip it up, actually. I might do it that way. You know, like I said, half the straightening metal is in your mind. Um, the other half is... Uh, actually physical blows uh, most of it's in your head let's see let's try it that way first and having something nice and, and stable to pound on is, is actually for, for this type of shit where i'm trying to recreate um where i'm trying to recreate this lip here and uh actually this being bent might help. <laughs> will help that i actually have some angle iron out in the garage or out in the compressor shed that's got an edge on it that I may end up going to go get just because I know I can hit it easier. It is, it is what it is. I'm gonna try this first because I don't feel like going outside sweating my ass off. I'm gonna have to set this aside. 
So I'm gonna set this up like this. And this is one of those times where I really wish I had help, uh, but I don't, so. Uh, I'm just gonna work little tiny bits at a time until I get it right. Uh, ha! Uh, that's not gonna work very well. But it might do what I want it to do. We're gonna move, we're gonna move. 